Hi handsome and welcome to my 11th video. Sorry that this one took so long to come out. I am at the final stretch of uni and writing the thesis, which makes my free time shrink big time. Anyway, enough apologizing, okay, let's get into what is waiting for us today. And boy, is it something. In today's episode of Video Story Mode, we are going to look into the story of Calpheon. The story starts in Delphi Knight's castle, because before we can enter Calpheon proper, we first need a permit. However, the castle is under the attack of harpies, so instead of going through a long boring process full of paperwork, we just have to talk to a few people, watch a flashback of Jordine together with the show Wizard Money Gang, declaring war on Calpheon, meet with Eden and Yas, who tell us that they are the secret guard, whatever that means, kill some harpies, destroy a rock, and we are on our merry way to meet with all but since she is not at the farm we were told to go to, we asked Norma Light where she might have gone. Norma doesn't know Orven though, so instead we talked to Marfa Kien, the archaeologist we met in Balanos, who sends us to the contaminated farm where we meet Gorga. Not how much happens here with Gorga, it's just repeating what we already know, darkness this, Belmer then, that, etc. Does not really matter that much to her story. Anyway, we go to the refugee camp with Orven, where we see Jordine, this time with our own eyes. He is currently in the process of zombifying the refugees. This of course means that we get to kill them. Not because Orwen told us to do so, but because some random priest of Elion, whose name might as well be Arthas, demanded that the refugees must be purged. After putting the refugees to rest, we talk to a priest of the church in the city proper, but he is not very kind to us, so instead we walk all the way back to, to, to the entrance to talk to Rubin, who sends us to his sister, who then sends us to the other end of Calpheon, where we finally get sent to the Holy College. And then we get to progress the story. But before we do that, we need to go to the top of the tower at the Holy College to get some relic for Alustin. And then we finally get to progress the story. Alustin, Orwen, Gorga and Preharau from Glish all meet together. We are told that Jordine is going to succumb to Belmore, who possessed him at the end of the sto Serendia story, very soon. We are also told about the Undying Light, which was supposed to protect humans by combining the spirits Storm, Earth and Fire. I mean, earth, clear water and crimson flame. We also learn of the guardian of the ancient origin who is supposed to awaken the light. Prehero is a confirmed atheist because he does not believe in this and is very quickly put in his place by the Giga Chat Alustin who just randomly drops the bomb that he is the guardian of origin. Orwen is sent to find the origin of clear water and we are sent to help Eden find the origin of earth. But before we go and do that, I need to talk about this wagon. I have been walking past this wagon for as long as I can remember and every single time I saw it I thought the exact same thing. How did it get here? There is no way it can get out of here. There are stairs everywhere. There are also low hanging gates that would prohibit the wagon to pass through. Why are they even here? Are, are these somehow important to the Valkyries who study here? And then there are two wagons of like this as well? It makes no sense. Are there like wagon elevators or something that we just don't get to see? But let's not talk about the wagons because it would just break my brain seeing the wagons that are supposed to somehow fly or appear, teleport. I don't know, <laughs> let's not talk about it anymore. We meet with this guy we saw in Serendia briefly. We need to kill some ancient weapons to make it safer for people excavating here and then we meet with Marfa again. When talking to her, some goblin appears and warns us about the extraction site, so we of course go there and find another ancient device that makes our black spirit power up again. And thank god for this, you probably did not hear this in the video, but ever since the black spirit had teeth, Every single time you would open his menu or like talk to him, you would just hear him clicking those teeth constantly. And if you are trying to read what he's saying, right, because this is a story re recap in a sense, it makes it so annoying to hear him just
Turning to Marfa gives us another cutscene. This time it's Eden recovering the origin of Earth. And if you thought this would be some kind of a challenge or that it would even be something that we would help him with, I'm sorry to disappoint. He just gets some magic words to recite. He says those words, Marfa falls unconscious or whatever, and then she wakes up and the origin of Earth is already in Eden's possession. After recovering the origin of Earth, we go to the Kafra's cave to follow Orven. We meet some old shy that tells us not to go, but we go, kill some adventurers possessed by the Black Spirit, and get another flashback. This time it's of Orven and Jordan who meet, and Orven tries to fight Jordan but loses and is corrupted by Jordan. She's then saved by the people from Florin, so that's where we reunite with her, but not before doing some tasks for the villagers. We return to the cave to talk to the shine named Koi and find a book on the origin of clear water, which we take to Marfa. Because the book is written in Carsian language, she is of no help, so she tells us to find La Pepet Mountain, who will translate the book for us while we kill some monsters nearby and recover a journal for him. Luffy didn't manage to translate much, but he did discover the next location we need to go to. Glutony or Glutony Cave? I'm not sure. I've never heard it said, so let's go with Glutony. And Medias, who is also here for some reason, because she says this place appeared in her dream. Okay, we finally find the origin of clear water, do a task to prove ourselves to it, and return to Yas, who is now in Kaplan. Also, it's kind of funny because we met Yas a few times already, and we literally met her like five minutes ago in front of the cave, but now she acts like she barely knows us and we only met once. Uh, something's weird here. We give the origin to Alustin, and he now summons the We also become the chosen one, quite literally. With the light in our hands, we make way to Trina 4, which is under attack from Sonos. Here, we help deliver medical supplies, help a soldier get the balls to fire the Watcha, talk to the commander, kill a bunch of Sonos, as well as their siege captain, and are back on the Jordan chase. On the way to Jordan, we talk to some Trina scouts who tell us about Jordi becoming completely yes, overtaken by Belmore. How they Those figured that out, I have no idea, but here. let's not question it. Also, the less we talk about the voice acting in the cutscene with Jordi being possessed, the better. You filthy scum. My man, Belmore casually summons a dragon. I think this is. Black Shadow that we get like an event every Saturday and we have to chase him around. I think that's the same dragon, I don't know any other dragons in video, but we don't get any name for this, he just appears, uh, Belmore tells the dragon to burn everything down and that's it. Anyway, now we just get to summon and kill Belmore pretty abruptly and I thought so too. The funniest thing is that the entire time that we are chasing Jordan, or Belmorn for the matter, we are told that he is ex expecting us. He wants us to meet, or that at least he knows about us and knows about our black spirit and wants the, the black energy for himself before we take it. Yet, we never get to meet him before the fight. Every single cutscene was a flashback or someone else encountering or seeing Jordine and then telling us about the encounter. And if you thought that we would at least get some sort of a big cutscene using the origin of light to defeat him now, if we didn't see him until now, right? So at least we get some big set piece that will at least help this issue. No, there is nothing special about Belmore. We just summon him in the middle of nowhere like any other boss we fought so far. There is no significance to his fight. The only special mechanic he does is that he summons the Shadow Wizard money gang and otherwise he just attacks us. What a bummer. Then he just dies and there is no cutscene again. 
There is absolutely nothing. You really got the feeling that the fight with Jordine would be somewhat longer. That it would be like Jordine declaring war on Calfion and using the local tribes of lesser monsters to fight his fight. We could get to meet him, try to stop him, he would have to retreat or we would get overwhelmed since we wouldn't have the origin of light at the start of the story. And then we would have to go on the McGuffin hunt and we could have a rematch even in this cave and then we would finally beat him if we would get to beat him at all. Now, this is not the end of Jordine or nice Belmore, at least for one more cutscene. We need to go to another place, choose between an artifact that would power up our black spirit and Orwen's light, who got possessed by Belmore, if you remember back in the Kafra's cave. I mean, I say choose, it's just a cutscene, so it's more that we save Orwen's life and Belmore is gone. Jordan just appears here out of nowhere, tells us that he's not finished and then disappears once again. And to spoil the rest of this video and does the rest of the Calpheon story, he doesn't appear in Calpheon again. Since the rest of the story has nothing to do with Jordine, let's talk about what we just went through. One word to describe it would be rushed. One cutscene, Jordine declares war, the next he starts corrupting people, but only in the refugee camp and nowhere else. Then we are sent on this McGuffin hunt, Jordan corrupts Orwen, we assemble the origin of light, Bill Morn takes over Jordan, we kill him, story over. If you took out the killing of the mobs, walking between locations and doing random favors for every NPC you meet, because for some reason everyone needs something done for them first before they decide to help you in any way and move the plot forward, you will end up with maybe 5, maybe 10 minutes of story. Even for a non-story focused game, this is not enough. And even for an MMO, this is not enough. What doesn't help this story either is that we are a little more than just a passenger. I am not the type of person who needs to be made the chosen one, even less so in MMOs. I really don't like this trope. It kind of breaks my suspension of disbelief when the story is centered around us as the main character, as this chosen one, you know, like in Final Fantasy you, have, you are the warrior of life. And this is why I am not a big fan of the Final Fantasy XIV story, because the chosen one trope simply doesn't work that well in a world with thousands, if not millions, of chosen ones running around. Personally, I would much prefer to be just some guy, some adventurer, helping people in need in these smaller adventures, something like you see in Vanilla or Classic WoW or something in RuneScape. But that is a topic for a different video, that's just my preference. BDO story tries to fit the adventure type of story into the chosen one trope and completely fumbles both approaches, in my opinion. Despite never meeting with Belmore, we are told that he is after us. When the origin of light assembly begins, we aren't even in the room with, with the people discussing the plan, yet we become the chosen by the light itself at the end. Everything important that happens in the story has already happened by the time we get there, so we are left to clean up after the main crew and collect breadcrumbs that led us to the next place that needs some cleaning. Hell, if you really think about it, you could have made Orwan the main character of Calpheon's story and not that much would have changed up until this point. Part of this is also a result of the story getting cut, because I remember that there was more to the story back in the day. For example, Orwen mentions the trolls attacking on another fort when we meet her in Florin. And I do remember a quest that had us destroy the trolls in catapults and kill some of their shamans and whatnot. I also remember going to the top of Marnie Lab to get something there and deal with the petrifying disease in Kaplan. That might be wrong, but this is a really distant memory for me. Maybe it's my mind just playing tricks on me, but I, if I do remember this correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, then it would explain a lot why the story feels so rushed. Maybe we did meet Jordine in one of these places that were cut, but we will never really know. The biggest problem of the story is that it simply has no real stakes. Everything is already resolved or gets resolved so quick to the point where 
we don't even have time to process what we just did. At least Pearl Base realized this as well, and we are getting this entire Jordan Saga rework very soon. Probably within the next two months, I would say, it got released in Korea, I think late February, it usually takes three to five months to localize, so I would guess May or June we would get to see this new saga, which will make this video completely redundant and obsolete, and will it will just remain as a look back in time. I did say that this is not the end of the Calfion story, but I will be real with you. You could completely skip the rest. Nothing of real importance happens outside of the very end. A lot of this is frankly really boring. The entire second half is basically one big fetch quest for Enric Encarotia, or Encarotia, a counselor in Calfion City, who wants a book forbidden by the alien church in Calfion. Every single quest in this entire chain is the same. So I will be brief and try to visually aid you with this heat map of our movement. This is also done so you know how much traveling this takes and just how dull this whole experience was. So let's go through this quickly. We go to the Holy College, talk to Rosie, she is completely useless. We talk to Nella instead, who is the niece of uh, Enrique and Carosia. She sends us to the Calfield Market to talk to Goblin Filaberto. Filaberto sends us to Lake Kaya, where we kill catfishmen because there is an assembly process into Calfion citizenship and killing the catfishmen and their leader is how you assimilate them into the citizenship, obviously, that's how you persuade people. After we kill the catfishmen, we go to the Rutum Sentry Post, continue our assimilation process with killing Rutums. After we kill Rutums, we go to the Goblin Chief to secure trade routes between Calfion and Trent. We do this by killing goblins in the Mancha forest. Then we go to Trent where we talk to Richter, who promises to get us the forbidden book that we were supposed to get, but she needs treant wood for it, so we go and kill some treants for her. Then we do the trade, get the book, take it to Nella in Calfion, she reads it and is terrified, so she tells us to get rid of it, but of course we don't do that and we read it instead. So here is what's in the book. Because what's in the book is somewhat interesting, but not very important to the story. The long story short of the book is that it tells us how the Shadow Wizard money gang led by Bel Belmorn was created. They started as the Knights of Dawn, a secret cult that followed the ancient light. When Belmorn awoken for the first time, they came out of hiding to see to assemble a big army of soldiers from every region in the world. They beat Belmore, but it says that it had some kind of dark influence on them, and they also had to deal with trying to stay neutral after they stopped being a secret cult and eventually shattered into small groups. One such group became the Church of Elion, I think it's called the Fraternity of Light, and another became the Shadow Wizard Money Gang. The forbidden part of the forbidden book, I assume, is the part where it mentions that these two groups still have close ties between them to this day. To make sure that this is true, we do some investigations around Calfion and find out that Encarosia, an ancestor of Nella and the counselor who gave us the quest, was also the person who betrayed the Knights of Dawn by killing their master. We talk to Enric, who gave us the fetch quest in the first place, and then confront him about the truth. He says that it's all a lie and the, the knights were heretics who summoned Xarka back in the day. Now that this fetch quest is over, of course he gives us another one. This time, instead of a book, we are looking for Nella, who has managed to disappear in the time that we were looking around Calfion. So it's another fetch quest, so it's back to Cliff Notes. We ask around the Holy College, get sent to Leona at the Church of Elia. Leona says that Nella is at the Hex Sanctuary. If we go there, we talk to a witch backer. We investigate the house at the sanctuary, find a soldier there, kill some skeletons for him. Then we go back, uh, talk to Jensen, who led Nella to the sanctuary. We get weapons for him first. Then we summon and kill Hex Marie, we save Nella, we get the refund from Jensen, follow Nella to the abandoned monastery, talk to a priest named Bacho, investigate a well, talk to a goblin who might have seen Nella, 
find his dead friend, kill some shadow knights, interrogate Bacho about the well, he confesses and yeps about how he decided to simp for some valkyrie lady who summoned Xarka back in the day, we go to the Galfion shrine, we kill some cultists at the shrine, we find Nella, Marta and Lavi Bad Mountain, we save Lars, come back to Marfa only to see that we now need to save Luffy for some reason. We kill a Cyclops to get a ceiling stone, enter a secret room, seek Sarka, and I think something breaks here. I don't know what is happening or what is even supposed to happen. Because Xarka is here and so are, so are some cultists, but we cannot kill Xarka or do literally anything. We can't leave the room either. And then Xarka just disappears and we are teleported out of the room. I must have missed something here by running around like a headless chicken and panicking that I missed something. But I have no clue what happened or what was supposed to happen. Marfa mentions some woman from Medea who took Xarka's soul. I really don't know much more what was supposed to happen. So I'm sorry about this guys. You will need to... Play this part of the story yourself to know what happens, or don't, you know, it's probably gonna get reworked anyway. Oh yeah, and uh, Nella is not heard or seen from again, so I have no idea what happened to her either. Maybe she was taken, or maybe she was killed by the woman, or maybe she was the woman. I, I really don't know, and I hope I will at least get to see that uh, in the Medea part, because I think this is going to set up Medea. Anyway, with that out of the way, we return to Trent to get a horse, but I don't have the horse on this character, so I just walk with the movement speed buff all the way to Serendia Shrine, where another Xarka's spawn point is supposed to be. After a very long walk, we meet Hakon at the shrine, who tells us to distract the cultists at the shrine by killing them. The distraction always works, I, I hear. He says that the ceiling stone was damaged and Xarka might return at any point in the future, so we must be ready. We are teleported to the Calpheon Council, relay the news to the Senate, and are told that the woman who stole Xarka's soul is in Medea which is where we will go in the next episode. Really, there was nothing to talk about in the second half of the story. Two giant fetch quests with a little bit of setup and interesting story at the end that I sadly managed to somehow miss. Somehow, this was worse than the first half. Once again, we were chasing after something, we got exposition and lore about what happened in the past and always arrived late everywhere. There were Absolutely no cutscenes in the second part of the Scalfion, by the way, which also means no voice acting, and the story quest structure was just bad. Every single time we had to go to a person who had something we needed, but before they could give it to us, we had to do a favor for them. That something usually involved a lot of killing mobs and traveling. I will refrain from talking about this much more in detail, because like I said, this part of the story should be getting reworked soon. So whatever mistakes were made during the process will surely be fixed, right? I hope so. I just wish... There wasn't so many of them. Unfortunately, as far as I know, there have been no announcements made about Medea's storyline. So, if that part is also subpar, which we will find out in the next episode, so do stay tuned. There is sadly no copium to be held just yet about that. Hopefully, it will get reworked though. We still have a lot of story to go through, so although this has not been an easy process so far outside of Balanos. I am determined to see it through and find any and all diamonds in the rough that the story of BDO can produce. I still stand behind what I said in the Balanos part, so the sooner we can get on the level of storytelling and quest design found in Balanos, the better. Alright handsome, that is it for today's video. I am sorry for taking such a long break. I did not manage to manage my time well, juggling university, my day job and YouTube proved to be kind of impossible. And this episode also took a lot longer than I anticipated to make. I did not think that to just finish the story itself would take like 4 hours. So that's also my bad. I still hope you liked the video and that you will decide to subscribe. And I hope that YouTube has not killed the traction, uh, all the traction to my channel. I am not sure when the next video will come out because I still have the university work to do and that it will 
finish by the 9th of May. So maybe I will manage to put some smaller, shorter video out, but don't expect anything longer, anything with like a large script or a lot of editing or anything like that. I will try to put something out at least. Uh, I have some ideas of what I want to make, even some that are shorter. So don't worry about me. I didn't just disappear. It really was just a lot of other responsibilities. With that being said, I once again hope you liked this video. Make sure to tell me what you think about the story and how much you are looking forward to the reworked Jordan Saga. And I bid you farewell and enjoy your grind.